Congressman served as a volunteer in the Israeli Defense Forces, and he sits on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, and he served for our nation valiantly as well, too. It is great to see you today. Let's dig in. Um, I asked the question about what it looks like on the Lebanese uh, Israeli border. And the reason I ask that question is if you know that there's a ground incursion coming, you'll move some people out of the way. I get that. But if you know Iran is going to then come from another direction and join that, you'll move everybody. Is that even a potential? I mean, would Iran do more than just hit Israel by air? Look, I think what Iran has to assess in the response that they give is probably twofold. One, has Israel totally degraded their ability to do a short range attack by what they did on that Lebanon border? Have they eliminated those those capabilities of rockets, of drones, of things in the short way? And so are they left with only the option of doing something from a longer range? And then they have to assess. Because remember, they're not dealing exactly with U.S. military grade equipment in the same generation that we talk about right. our generation generations of equipment. They're not, in, they're not in the same ballpark. They're not in the same game. So what can they do against the other systems of defense that are there beyond the Iron Dome system that gets spoken about so much? The aero system, the, the tactical high altitude area defense systems, uh, the David Sling systems, these other systems. What do they think they can do against other systems of defense? And that's something that they have to calculate. So you were part of the IDF. And I know viewers may wonder, well, how did that come about and what can you tell us about those fighting forces? Well, I, uh, this goes back to what was going on in higher education years ago. I was a student at Harvard back in 2014. There were constant uh, protests against Israel at that time. And I decided one day after having a very negative encounter with uh, some Palestinian supporters that I was going to go and show my support for Israel. And I did. I went and volunteered alongside their military there, which was a great experience. Um, but what I can tell you about the difference in those forces is they realize on a daily basis that they are surrounded by enemies directly on their border, whether it be the tunnels that come through Egypt, whether it be what comes across from Gaza or whether it be what comes from the north in, in Lebanon, they have a daily reminder of the enemy is on their border. And it's just a matter of, you know, maybe 40, 50 miles for them to cut the country in half in many of these places. That's the reality for the fighters on the ground. Congressman Mass, do you believe that there was any sort of coordination between Hezbollah and Hamas on October 7th? Hezbollah began to hit Israel very hard with more missiles on October 8th after that seventh attack. Do you think there was any coordination between those two groups? I absolutely believe that there was coordination and that Israel was wise to not take the bait. Israel has been bombarded by Hezbollah for the, the last year, moving people out of the north of Israel because so many people have been attacked, the, you know, many uh, refugees, I guess you could call them at this point. They wanted to focus on what was going on in Gaza. They are now moving on to addressing what has been taking place for this last year coming from the Lebanon border, coming into Israel. And this had to happen. And, and in this, I think everybody needs to ask themselves a question as they ask, well, is this going to escalate? Is this going to lead to something bigger? Mm -hmm. If this was the United States of America and Canada were lobbing rockets into Michigan or the cartels on the southern border were lobbing them into California or Arizona or someone else, None of us would be asking if it's going to escalate. We would mm. only be asking what capabilities we need to destroy that enemy. Well, the cartels are an enemy and they don't use That's bombs. Right. They use fentanyl and sex trafficking and attacking You're women and children. Right. They're cowards. So, yeah, I guess that's our first war down there. Uh, last quick question. What type of movement now are you looking at to say what Iran is going to do next? You know, I, I think for them, are they moving any forces that they have remaining off of the border? Again, recognizing the difference in generations of, of weaponry that they have. Israel has to look at, OK, did they only have capability to fire something that they had eyes on or lasers on? Or okay. again, this is going into details of different generations of technology. But those have to be things that Israel are looking for. Congressman Mast, it is always great to have you in focus. Thank you for your service and your expertise. Thank you, Harris. Hey everyone, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please click like and subscribe. I will be back on YouTube with more exclusive content, so stay tuned.